What's up, people? It's Bob Ham here with another video for you, as promised. Um, hopefully you've checked out the last one where I uh, laid out the huge score of jazz records that I uncovered. Uncovered? Is that the right word for it? I don't know. Discovered? I don't know. They're all mine now. That's all the important part of the story. I found an amazing bunch of records. So stoked to share those with you. So stoked to be listening to those, sharing those with people on Twitch. And crazy fun. But as I said in the last video, one thing I wanted to do, which is I think I did this last year, or at least the last one for um, Black Friday for Record Store Day, is sort of run down some of the better stuff that's coming out on tomorrow on Record Store Day. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to write about records on the regular, and so I get promos of a lot of Record Store Day stuff, so I could, you know, preview them for paste where I do a lot of writing and do a column about vinyl and for the last few years I've been really lucky of getting some really killer stuff from the record store day bins um, in my mailbox instead of having to fight with people at the store you can see some of them up there behind me uh, like the Ramon set that's up there and a few other things that have come my way and it's just it's crazy cool and I couldn't be more uh, humbled by the fact that I get you know records in the mail for free and get to write about them and now I get to share them with y'all who are subscribers to my channel here. So yeah, take this for what you will. This isn't obviously a complete list of the stuff that I would recommend for Record Store Day because I don't have some of the stuff I didn't get promos of, some of the stuff I, I, I likely wouldn't, and so I would like to go and buy at some point. The biggest one of those I can think of is the uh, Beauty Pill record. Uh, Beauty Pill describes things as they are. It's a great uh, DC art pop band that released this record in 2015 with a uh, what they thought at the time was a great label but turned out to be run by a real shady piece of shit and so uh they had to you know the, the record went out of print really quickly even though it got named like one of the best of the year by robert Criscow and in time magazine and it just turned into a big debacle and he uh, the, the main guy behind the project chad clark finally got the rights back for the record and it's re-releasing it on his own label tomorrow and it's got bonus tracks on there remastered sound some uh redone artwork a little bit uh so stoked that that happened and i'm gonna have to track down a copy of that one there's a bunch of other stuff on my list that i won't get into because it's a long list as i'm sure it is for all y'all but uh of the stuff that i got sent to preview and write about uh that's the stuff i'm going to run down for you right now some recommendations if you don't have these on your list already to do so and to consider picking them up and and i'm not you know uh, these endorsements are just mine. I'm not getting paid by any of the labels to do this. This is just my feelings and excitement about Record Store Day. As I've been excited about Record Store Day from the jump. So, shall we begin? Yes, we shall. Hope you're sitting comfortably. And then we shall begin. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I got was in the jazz uh, front. Uh, including this great collection of Shirley Scott. Uh, what is it called? Queen Talk Live at the Left Bank. Which is Shirley Scott playing in Baltimore, Maryland at a venue uh what was it what's the venue called it's the uh famous ballroom in baltimore maryland recorded in 1972 just a killer collection of stuff if you don't know shirley scott just a completely underappreciated jazz organ player really did some great records on impulse did a lot of records with uh, eddie lockjaw davis there's a collection of their uh albums that they made together that came out a couple months ago that is also highly recommended, but this is really killer groove, funk, jazz. Uh, she's a great version of Coltrane's Impressions on here. And there's some uh, stuff like Never Can Say Goodbye, uh, which is a uh, song that's done by the Jackson 5, I think. And by the time I get to Phoenix, one of the great, uh, there's a Backrack and David composition for Jimmy Webb. One of the others, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that this is a great record, and you should add that to your Record Store Day list if you don't already. If you like soul, funk, jazz, that is a great selection. Uh, jumping into a different category, I'm not sure, let's keep going with the jazz stuff, and I'll get back to this one in a second. So uh, we've got Sonny Stitt, uh, the wonderful jazz sax player. Um, this is some more stuff that was recorded in Baltimore, some of it at uh, the famous ballroom in 75. November 75, uh, Sonny Stitt, an underappreciated saxophone player. I think he was tight with, he was, this is the guy who was tight with uh, Charlie Parker early on, and Charlie's like, you sound just like me when he heard him play, and I can't think of a higher compliment, but uh, he's definitely went on to do his own thing as heard on this record. 
really great straight ahead jazz. They sound like, uh, is this, this is the record that I'm thinking of. No, nah, I'm thinking of a different record. But they, they sound really heated on this record. There's a couple of tracks in here. The version of Stella by Starlight is just swinging and beautiful. And uh, the opening track, I think 19 minutes long, called Baltimore Blues, which, uh, what an opening statement for a set like this. Uh, so stoked that these are coming out. Uh, shout out to Zev Feldman, who I think is the guy responsible for putting this one out, for getting a hold of you know tapes from uh, these recordings that were made at this um, venue in Baltimore and other places in Baltimore, and has been putting out a bunch of this stuff this record store day. Uh, yeah, Zev Feldman, shout out. Let's see, let's get some more jazz stuff in here before I jump into the other assorted stuff. Looking, looking, looking. If you want to get some avant jazz material, Go over this William Hooker record, Shambhala. This was released, I think, in 93, 94, somewhere around there, and it's duets that he did, as it says here, with Thurston Moore and Elliot Sharp. Uh, William Hooker, a great uh, free jazz drummer and poet, and obviously Thurston Moore, the founder of Sonic Youth, one of the founders of Sonic Youth, Elliot Sharp, who's been one of the you know, major players in the avant-garde scene in New York for decades now. Uh, very different vibes on these two, like both discs have the duets with each individual uh, guitarist on there. You know, Thurston Moore sounds like Thurston Moore, a lot of distortion, a lot of uh, crazy feedback, and then uh, Elliot Sharp is much more percussive and really uh, almost almost kind of finger-picky, kind of in the shredding, like metal shredding vein, but, you know, with a much different idea in mind, besides not showing off his virtuosity, just trying to, you know, squeeze as much weird sounds out of his instrument as he can. And he certainly does on this one. So Org Music has put this one out. Coming out tomorrow. Another highly recommended one. Uh, let's get some more jazz. We like jazz. Some more Zeb Feldman wonders. This is Chet Baker, his Blue Room uh, sessions that he recorded in 1979 in Holland. You know, he uh, basically exiled himself to Europe. Uh, I don't want to say exiled. I mean, he was just, you know, he, he sort of lost shine here amongst uh, jazz fans and jazz critics here in the States, but found he was really, really beloved in Europe, and so moved there. Uh, came back here to play shows in the States, but, you know, generally spent their last, you know, few decades of his life in Europe, and this is him in 79. Uh, just great, great sessions on here. Um, yeah, I mean, he just sounds, his, his tone is so clear and so beautiful and so direct, and so the rest of the players that are on here kind of follow suit, just not overplaying. Uh, their solos on here are very, very tasteful, and his stuff just sticks to the melody and sticks to it well, but he imbues so much passion into those simple melodies that he's playing on songs like, you know, Old Devil Moon, or what else is on here? Old Devil Moon, uh, The Best Thing For You, The Rogers and the Heart Tune, Blue Room. It's incredible stuff, yeah. Another great jazz record. Uh, probably the one of the best uh, jazz piano players around, or not around, he's not around anymore, but around in the 60s and 70s, 50s, 60s, and 70s is Bill Evans. And so this is another Zev Feldman production, Treasures, which uh, the subtitle is Solo, Trio, and Orchestra Recordings from Denmark from 65 to 69. He did a lot of work in Denmark. Uh, so um, I think all of these were recorded for Danish radio, so they sound incredible. Uh, especially the stuff with the orchestra where he's playing with, you know, a huge string section in one part, like he and his trio, and then one where he's playing solo with a big band. And it all just sounds so spectacular. This guy was such an expressive, um, yeah, expressive player, I think is the right word for it. Just, yeah, just poured so much of himself into his instrument. And that's why when his life was cut short like it was, thanks to, you know, his abuse of heroin, and alcohol, uh, it was such a huge loss for jazz. He could, God willing, he would still be playing right now. Uh, but yeah, this is an incredible, amazing sounding collection of jazz recordings. And I think that might do it. But well, actually, let's get into this jazz record, which is, uh, you know, Jazz Dispensary, with sort of a uh, cute little sub label of craft recordings that uh, has been re-releasing a lot of really great uh, spiritual jazz and soul funk jazz stuff uh, under the idea that it's good stuff to get high to. Well, you know, get high to. Yeah, well, you're listening to it while you're getting high. 
And so they've been releasing every once in a while these great Record Store Day compilations of stuff, uh, just cherry picking things from different great albums. This one's an interesting one. It's the Hotel Jolie Dame. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Sort of, it's a uh, a fake hotel that they made up for this compilation uh, to to this uh, gentleman, Hakankin Hakankin Altener. I hope that's a pseudonym. I don't know. That sounds ridiculous, but maybe if it's your real name, good on you. I love it. But so it's again another cherry pick collection, but it's much more like you know stuff you'd want to ride a Vespa down the coastline to. Or just, you know, be sunbathing too. But it's a really interesting collection of stuff. You get a really funky Dizzy Gillespie song in here called Ozone Madness. And uh, Flora Porter's Light as a Feather. Uh, and a couple of my favorites, the, you know, the synthesizer uh, pioneer Jean-Jacques Perry is on here with a track called In the Heart of a Rose from his amazing new electronic pop sound record. And the harp player Dorothy Ashby with, his, with There's a Small Hotel I think it's a collection of her stuff that's come out recently, right? Do I have that right? I'm pretty sure I have that right. I'd like to get a hold of that, if there is, because I love Dorothy Ashby. As far as jazz harp goes, and she's number two right after Alice Coltrane. All right, let's get into some more of this good stuff. And this is uh, moving out of the jazz world into the pop and rock universe. Uh, this is the record by Poe, L.A. singer-songwriter, uh, who recorded this record, and this came out in 1995. Uh, really good stuff if you're into like garbage, Alanis Morissette, that kind of vibe. Uh, you know, trip hop, a little bit of rock vibe to it, some soul and R&B. Uh, really cool stuff. This never came out on vinyl as far as I know, so this is the first time it's coming out, uh, this record store day. Uh, I guess one of the big things that they've been talking about a lot is that uh, she collaborated with Jay Dilla early on in his career on one of the tracks in this record. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to say it was like, oh, he just gave him a loop, but no, like he was in the studio with them working on a track together, and so it came with a really, really cool little, again, another cool trip hop vibe. So something to look out for if you're unfamiliar. Uh, if you're a reggae fan, can't go on with Peter Tosh. This uh, Live and Dangerous collection, I think it was also recorded for radio, like the uh, Bill Evans stuff. Uh, this was part of Peter Tosh's first U.S. tour, one of the first shows he ever played. It's actually in Cambridge, but, you know, technically you can call it Boston. But, yeah, it's, you know, killer reggae grooves in this one. He's just, you know, on fire right after he put out Legalize at his first solo record. So he's just out for mer out for no mercy on this one. So he's got uh, Sly and Robbie are playing in here. Some, what are the other great, some other great players on here? Sly and Robbie. Oh, yeah, Earl Wirelindo and Errol Tarzan Nelson on keyboards, both playing keyboards. They add so much... You know, texture and weirdness to this one. It's almost gets psychedelic at times, which I really dig. Uh, this label, uh, Liberation Hall, is putting this out on vinyl for the first time, this uh, collection of uh, the folk singer Phil Oakes's demos that he did for his publishing deal, as well as a few bonus tracks in there. Uh, if you are a fan of Dylan and Dave Van Ronk, you can't go wrong with Phil Oakes if you're unfamiliar with his work. Uh, big fan. I think I like him more than Dylan some of the times, just because I think his stuff is more pointed politically. Uh, but, you know, big influence on folks like Billy Bragg and Chumbawamba, stuff like that, if you like political folk. Uh, Liberation Hall is also responsible for this great live record by the Sir Douglas Quintet, the project led by Doug Somm. Um, this is an eight song, I think it's a sound check that they did at this club at the Troubadour in LA. Uh, just for a handful of fans, uh, and uh, the sound engineer decided to roll tape on it, and I'm so glad that he did. This is really, really great, you know, funky country soul, and yeah, it gets crazy into it. It's like in straightforward country stuff, but um, a lot of it is really bluesy, funky, you know, they call it Tex-Mex, but I, that, that doesn't feel right to me. And of course, it has a great version of their hit Mendocino. Uh, another one that I think has been out on CD before, but is finally coming out on Wax for Records for Days, is Muddy Waters live at the Ash Grove in Hollywood. Um, you can't, you know, you, you probably already know Muddy Waters, know what the man is capable of on stage. And yeah, a lot of passion on this record, a lot of heavy, heavy grooves. Um, really amazing playing. The big thing is they had Pine Top Perkins uh, playing a piano through the whole set, which is really, really great. But my favorite dude... Uh, which 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 is his name? Um, yeah, Paul Osher, uh, this dude from LA who was playing harmonica with uh, I think he was from LA, 
Anyway, he's playing. He might have been from Chicago, but he's been, he was playing harmonica with Muddy Waters for a number of years. And man, he just rips in this record. I mean, I'm not the hugest blues fan, but you know, there's something about this that really gets me. Uh, getting into some more esoteric stuff. Uh, this is a project by a dude from Detroit that came out in the late '70s, sort of a private press thing. I uh, recorded most of it on his own. Tommy Cousins was his name, and it's a really strange. Um, it's, no, it's like it jumps genres quite a bit. There's a little bit of reggae in here, a little bit of new wave, a little bit of glam rock. Uh, it's just a guy who has a studio at his disposal and loves music and decided to just go for broke making this really strange record. And amazingly, people fell in love with it once they, they heard it. And it, you know, like I said, it only came out in a small press in the 70s. So, you know, collectors have been finding it and falling in love with this record. And bootlegs have come out. But this has never been sort of officially re-released until just now. So once again, thank you, Org Music, for being responsible for this one. It's it's an odd one. If you like like the the Lewis stuff that Numero Group has put out or Jandek, you might get a kick out of what this guy's doing. Uh, I'm not gonna try to. It's Vopli Vido Pliasova. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a Ukrainian rock band that I think are still active today. But this is the first thing they put out in 1989. It was like a cassette-only release of these guys, basically making demos in their basements, in, in, their ba in a basement studio. But uh, people who saw them live heard it and got copies of it and would dub it and share it with their friends. And it became this, you know, kind of sensation in around the Ukrainian rock scene. Um, you know, they've since gone on to really mellow out their sound with, you know, more you know, horns and some ska stuff in there, a little more metal, but this is like total noisy, grindy, post-punk stuff. And I think the weirdest, one of the weirdest things about it is there's an accordion playing through most of this stuff. So it's a really weird mixture of concepts and sounds. Uh, highly recommend it though, if you, you know, are into stuff like Gang of Four. I think I said Chumble Woman before, but they're, you know, I could hear them being, you know, in, in love with something like this or The X, that group from, that Dutch uh, punk group. Like punk collective uh i think when i listen to this one that's what i hear a lot of is the x and maybe some crass as well so if you're looking for something like that can't go wrong there as i said in my write-up i think if there's one record that if you know someone said like you know what's your most desired record for record store day it strangely would be this one which is uh crisp and hellion glover's the big problem does not equal the solution. The solution equals let it be. That's the full title of the record. Uh, this came out on Restless Records back in, what, 1989? Um, an almost indescribable record. Uh, you may recognize Crispin Glover. Uh, he was George McFly in the first Back to the Future film. He's also had a part in uh, American Gods, a recent uh, series, and actually had a part in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, if you've seen that movie. Um, but the stuff that he did on his own, uh, both filmically and musically, uh, goes far beyond the pale. Uh, I again, Jandek is a good is a good sort of signpost for this, as well as Daniel Johnston. Uh, but he does some reading on here and does some some music. Uh, it's really oddball stuff. It's a really squ really squeaky hormonal version of these boots are made for walking, an unsettling song called Clowny Clown Clown, uh, a song all about uh, a, a weird, almost hip hop song about masturbation. It just, just there's no, <laughs> this is such an oddball record and I'm the asshole who loves this very much. So I'm stoked that this is coming out on vinyl again. Uh, it's being reissued by Real Gone Music. So thanks to y'all over there for being insane enough to get this back into circulation because I'm pretty happy to have it and really hope Crispin makes another record because you know we don't hear enough from that guy uh this one a couple of surprises for me this is a, a rapper I didn't really know much about K Solo but uh reading up on him he was uh came up in I think it's the Hit Squad which is uh, a collective in New York uh sort of surrounding the work of EPMD and uh Parish uh, PMD produced a lot of this record and this guy did a couple records i think his claim to fame is that he had a big sort of beef with uh dm dmx i guess they were in jail together for a stretch and uh he felt like dmx uh stole a lot of his uh 
his vibe, I guess, and, you know, still a lot of the, you know, the flow and the way he raps, but I don't hear it so much on this record. I haven't heard the second album of this guy's, but this one's really, really great. It's, it's, you know, really good boom bap 90s, uh, New York hip hop. Um, some really killer tracks on here. Uh, it's really, this, your mom's in my business is that they're really, <laughs> it's, it's got, I don't know, this, it's almost like the production of that was really, really dark, but it's also just like, why is your mother bugging us? We're just trying to be boyfriend and girlfriend and try to, you know, make out and get it on. Like, what's going on? Uh, and then there's a really interesting, you know, song all about his Muslim faith on here, The Messenger, which is pretty great. Um, Rene Rene is a little bit of an awkward tune because he's kind of getting into slut shaming on that one from some girl uh, named Rene. But uh, still, if you don't, if you like hip hop, I think this one would be good to have in the collection. Uh, the other one that I've, a band I was unfamiliar with until this record showed up on my doorstep is Wild Carnation. Uh, it's a band led by Brenda Souter, who's the uh, bass player of the Feelies, who joined them in the 80s and has been on their last like five or six records, I think. Um, and so this is a project she had of her own, uh, really great jangle pop stuff. Um, if you like, you know, sort of mid to late period uh, teenage fan club or heavenly groups like that this is definitely in that wheelhouse uh really fantastic stuff i was really blown away by this record and uh who put this out it was a delmore recording company society delmore recording society is uh, responsible for getting this one back in circulation on vinyl for the first time uh hope this band is still a going concern i'd love to see them play live if, if i can make if we can make that happen so brenda if you're listening come on get the band back together yeah, really, really great. And this uh, this also came with a great like download with uh, a, a live set that they did in Germany in 97 uh, and then some demos of stuff on here. So really, really cool stuff. All right, last ones I'm going to go into are stuff that I would have picked up anyway, but they just showed up today, so I didn't get a chance to write about these yet. I might try to get that done before the day is out, but these are stuff that Fire Records is responsible for re-releasing as part of the UK Record Store Day. Uh, they've been kindly re-releasing all of the Groundhog's work. Uh, so this is the Groundhog's album, Crosscut Saw, a record I know very little about, but I do love what I've heard of Groundhog's. Um, I've got a few of their records. Uh, Thank Christ for the Bomb, and that's the record, right? <laughs> I feel like that's a, that sounds like a crass title. It might, might still be the right title, but... Uh, you know, Who Will Save the World, I think, is the other one I'm thinking of. Uh, anyway, the stuff that I've heard of the Groundhogs, I really, really dig. Like, really good bluesy psych rock. And excited to dig into Crosscut Saw once uh, I you know, get off the phone here with y'all. Get off the phone. Listen to me. Uh, this is a record I already have a copy of, but this is a really nice uh, reissue that's coming out with uh, an entire disc of bonus tracks with outtakes and some radio stuff. Uh, this is Tom Rapp's group, Pearls Before Swine. Basically, if you took a group like uh, Fairport Convention and went further down uh, the avant-garde rabbit hole and psychedelics, uh, you might end up with a record that sounds like Balaclava, this record, from Pearls Before Swine. Um, yeah, from 1970, 1971, somewhere in there. No, oh, 1968, excuse me. Yeah. Classic record of the acid folk world, if you're not familiar with it. A great uh, Hieronymus Bosch cover there. And this is another one I'm particularly excited about. Uh, if you like noise rock and the sonic youthy vein, Van Cum uh, from Boston. Uh, released a bunch of stuff on Matador. Uh, 1111 was their first full length for uh, Matador. It's still a classic. And I think everything they've done has been really, really fantastic. But this is uh, this is one I'm, great, I'm, I'm grateful to have again because I used to have a copy of this and I sold it foolishly when I needed money years ago but yes this is from 1998 Com is still uh, a band making still making noise still touring I don't know that they've made any new music recently because uh, the front woman uh, Talia Zedek uh, has released a lot of stuff on her own name and with her own band and Chris Brokaw the guitar player on here has done a lot of amazing solo records and uh, has been busy with the reunion of Cody and he was their drummer if you like the slow core stuff so yeah, if you like your noise rock and the Teenage Jesus and the Jerks, Sonic Youth vein, with a little more of a melodic edge, uh, yeah, gently down the stream. That's the way to go. Whew. Anyone going out for Record Store Day tomorrow? Uh, I don't, usually, just because I don't like the insanity and the busyness. Uh, and 
yeah, like I said, I'm lucky enough to get some of this stuff uh, for gratis, if you want to put it that way. So I don't feel the necessity. And then I've got friends who go out every year, and so I can just send them with a wish list and say, like, hey, if you run across a copy of this or that, grab it for me. And they generally do, which is a nice thing. And the stuff that I'm looking for is generally the more esoteric side. And so that's not the stuff that disappears too quickly here in Portland for some reason. So if you're going out for records today, let me know what you're going to grab. Uh, leave a comment and, yeah, let me know what's on your wish list. And let me know if there's a wish list of yours of records that you have, like, grails you've been looking for, records you want to add to your collection. I'll see if I can help you out. Uh, as I've done, as I'm trying to do with Martin of Martin's Vinyl, I've been trying to find some children's record. Uh, for him for the last few months and just have had no luck but I'm still on the hunt for that my friend uh, yeah so just shoot me a comment and feel free to follow me as well on Instagram uh, Picnic Lightning Records Instagram.com Picnic Lightning Records is where I talk about a lot of the resale stuff and doing a whatnot sale pretty soon um, which yeah I'm pretty stoked about and then I think I'm getting a bunch of cassettes from uh, an auction pretty soon that I'll be selling and whatnot as well and then begrudging account is my own personal account where I post just odd pictures and then just, you know, stories of uh, stuff I'm listening to. So there's a lot of me out there in the world. This is there is with a lot of folks. We, we are all over the Internet. We put so much of ourselves into this virtual world and hopefully to make connections with people. And I have been thankful to have connected with some awesome people through the uh, these videos and through the vinyl community video world. So thank you so much for watching this, and thank you again for subscribing. If you haven't done so yet, please make that subscription happen. Always happy to have more people in the fold, and happy to have more people talking about vinyl and collecting vinyl. And yeah, so much fun doing these videos. So uh, I'll be back again. Have a good record store to everybody. Stay safe, and yeah, see you next time.